Hi, welcome back to Mountain Boys, doing another fly tying special for drift hook fly fishing. And today I'm going to be tying a flashback beadhead pheasant tail. Now I've got this one today on a size 16 Daiichi 1710. And what's special about this hook is that it's a 2x long, 1x strong uh, nymph hook. Uh, for your little stone fly patterns and stuff like that, when you have a bead head on there, it sometimes helps to have a 2x long hook just so you can get your proportions how you want. So for the bead on this, I went with a 2.4 mil or 332nd uh, bright brass bead. For a little bit of extra weight, I went with some 0 .010 lead wire. Uh, the thread I used on this was 70 denier red ultra thread. Um, you could also use brown and I probably suggest uh, for a size 16. Uh, this is a six aught but I'd suggest going for uh, a six aught if you're going to use unithread. Now for the body itself as well as the tail as well as the gills um, I used a pheasant tail from a rooster. So rooster pheasant tail here and I used both sides of the feather here. I used the stiffer side of the fibers for the tail and for the abdomen and then I used kind of the finer silkier side of the of the feather for the wing case and the gills. So for the thorax I just went with uh, some strong peacock curl and the ribbing, I used a small gold ultra wire, and since it's a flashback, I don't know if this will show up too well on the camera here, but there is a piece of small uh, opal mirage tinsel. Okay, I've got my hook in the vise here with the bead head on here, and I'm going to come in with some of that .010 lead wire. And I'm probably going to make, oh, six or seven turns on that just to get it how I, how I want, get enough to go back into the back side of that bead head and hold it in place. I'm going to snip off my ends there. I'm going to work over the cut ends with my fingernails here. And I'm just going to go ahead and push it right into the back of the bead head. And that'll hold that bead head nice and steady. So now, like I said, I've got my 70 denier red ultra thread. And I'm going to start laying down my thread wrap right behind that lead wire wrap. Come back a little bit, give it a slight tug, make sure it's nice and snug on there before I go ahead and snip off the tag end. Now, I'm going to wrap back with my thread, clear back to that where the hook starts to bend, being mindful of the point of my hook right there so I don't fray or cut my thread. And time for the tail. So I'm going to grab the rooster fiber, the rooster tail here, grab a few fibers off this. Maybe, maybe let's go for five. Size 16. Five seems like a good good amount for this. So I'm going to hold them kind of perpendicular to the um, shaft in that uh, feather right there before I cut them off. That way it cuts them off and the ends stay nice and even. So once I've got them here, I kind of want to size them uh, length here to the length of my body of my fly. So I probably, that might even be slightly long. Um, I want them just a little bit shorter than the length of my body. So, so I get them in there. I'll give them maybe a couple loose-ish loose wraps. And if they're not quite how I want, I'll go ahead and just pull them forward. Just a tad, just to take a look. Yep, I like them right there. So once I have them where I like, I'm going to go ahead and just wrap forward up here, kind of up to my lead wire wrap before I snip these off. Now, a note, um, put these aside and hold on to them because we're going to use them again here in a minute when it comes time to um, 
make our body, make our uh, abdomen segment there. So when I've got that done, I'm going to go to my gold ultra wire here, small ultra wire. Snip off a piece, a couple inches long, five, six inches, you know, six inch, seven inch piece like that. Be enough for, you know, three or four flies, maybe a few more. And put your thumb over it uh, before you snip it off too. Because when this stuff unravels off that spool, it's a nightmare. So kind of get it back on and seat that thing back in there immediately so it doesn't unspool on you. Now I'm going to take my ultra wire here. Keep it on top of the hook. I tied it in and I'm bringing it all the way back. We're going to grab small oh, small pearl or mirage tinsel, uh, whatever you have. Cut off a couple inch piece of it again. This will again be enough for probably a few flies. And I'm going to tie that in on the back right on top. I'm kind of make sure it goes in. I didn't catch that exactly on the top there. Choke up on my thread a little bit. There we go. So it's seated right where I want, which is centered on the top of the hook. Now the cut pheasant tail fibers that we used before, I think we had five of them. We might need only about four for the abdomen body, so you can probably go ahead and get rid of one. And you notice uh, they have kind of a darker mottled side and kind of the, the better rust colored side, it's a little more uniform. So that's the side we're going to use right now. Go ahead and tie these into place. And now it's time to start thinking about body taper on this fly. So I wrapped clear back to the lead. I'm going to wrap, oh, two thirds of the way down maybe. And then I'm going to wrap forward again. And I'm going to repeat this process several times, you know, backing off a little bit more each time, just so we can build up a nice smooth taper for the body of this fly. And see, I'm coming clear back basically to the bead head. I need to build up a little bit more on the front there. Back off a little bit. Now I'll bring it back in to the front. And there we go. Okay. Now I can wrap these together a little bit. Kind of give them a twist, a few twists, and we're going to wrap forward. And these will give us nice body on the abdomen of this fly. And you'll have to be kind of mindful um, as you're wrapping these so you don't lose the tips and everything and they come unwound on you. And we'll take it about there, so maybe about three quarters of the way up that, that thread wrap. I'm going to go ahead and catch them. Two good wraps there, just so they're nice and secure. Maybe a third. And I'll go ahead and snip these off now. Now it's time to bring our flash back over the abdomen, just like that. Hold it nice in the center, and give it a wrap, and you can adjust it a little bit to get it back in the middle. Couple wraps, just like that. In fact, I might take it a little further forward, just because I feel, feel like my abdomen's starting to get a little bit small compared to what my 
thorax is going to be in a minute. So once that's done, go ahead and grab your small ultra wire here. And we are going to counter wrap this back up the fly. Counter wrapping it will help keep everything else in place. Keep everything else nice and tight. And you don't need to make your spacing super close together. We're just trying to give it some rib and definition. But there at the very end, I gave it two tightly spaced wraps. Now, I did two wraps over. I'm going to come over the top of the thread, but not over the fly. And that's effectively going to reverse my thread wrap here. So I'm going to reverse wrap twice around that. Come over my wire again. And behind it with two more wraps like that. And that locked that ultra wire into place. So now that I can, to get this off of here, I just twist and helicopter it right off. And then it won't come un, unspooled on you like that. So, now that we've thought about um, our proportions a little bit, and we've got our abdomen kind of area you can see right here in the red, uh, we need to start thinking about wing case and gills. And for that, I like to go back to the pheasant tail again. And for this, I like to not grab the really like stiff fibers that are here on the, on the pheasant tail, on the rooster tail here. I like to go to kind of the silkier fibers that are on the other side of the feather. And you need quite a few more than you might realize. So right there, there's about a, I don't know, maybe a little more than a half inch bundle of these that I'm going to go ahead and snip off like I did before. Try to keep them as even as you can. Again, remember when we reverse these here in a little while, how far back you're going to want them. And you don't want them to take a big dive either direction right now. So I just tied those and I'm wrapping back a little bit. Secure them in place. Okay, now when we wrap our wing case over, then our mirage will be in the right spot. So, back to the peacock curl now. So I'm going to lock in my peacock curl there. Bring my thread Again, clear back to the front. Try not to make those fibers take too much of a dive. And you see, it, they'll stand kind of straight up right behind that bead head. And that's fine. Make sure we have enough wraps to cover underneath all, or cover up all of that red thread that we had underneath right now. So that's really what we're going for is enough to cover that over and build up, you know, give this give this uh, thorax a little bit of bulk. Um, just like that. Right there. Caught it in a wrap, locked it into place. Caught it in a second wrap. Now, to snip this off without messing up these fibers, I like to just lay my scissors kind of flat right on top of there and push that peacock curl into the notch and the scissors. And that'll cut the peacock curl without cutting any of those fibers. Now we can kind of split these fibers here in half. Uh, half to the left and half to the right. And we're gonna bring the rest of it back like this and that'll help us split them. And it'll also start to lay them down for us a little bit, which is what we want. So once you're there, you can kind of just hold them down with your finger, give a wrap, give another wrap, bring our tinsel up and over so it's on top of the wing case, give it another wrap, maybe two, then reverse all of those and give it a couple wraps behind here too. And we're going to get rid of the tinsel and our wing case fibers the same way we did our peacock curl. So I'm going to lay my scissors right on top, push them right in. 
Now you might still have to split these in half a little bit. Half one way, half the other way. Once you kind of get them like you want, you can do one side at a time if you like. Wrap those back and down. Then grab the other side. Wrap those back and down. And we're going to wrap back a little bit. So this is going to hold our little gills in place here. Give them about the right flare angle off of the body. And it's going to build up a little hot spot with the red thread right behind the bead head. So when that's done, go ahead and grab your whip finish tool. And we'll put like a four or five whip finish turn on this. One, two, three, four, five. Good enough. So there we go. Snip off my thread. And if you have any strays that are pointed forward, you caught one going the wrong way, just go ahead and manicure it. Now, to lock in the whip finish, I'm just going to use, again, clear nail polish right on top here. Just like that. Okay. There is a size 16 bead head flashback pheasant tail.